uh, at 50-something years old, you should not be wearing shorts. There's also a thing called keep your mouth shut. You don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. And on a teacher's salary, I was like, $10? What, 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 what exactly y'all doing for $10? She little, she don't even need that much. I'll send her with a lunch. Is this a dream? Good morning, ladies. As you may have guessed, we're in the car and on our way to the W-2. The year is progressing okay so far. Um, more expectations are getting put on us um, as the year progresses too, but that's to be expected. That comes with the territory of teaching as of late. And I say as of late because it wasn't always this way. It reminds me of that parable, you know, with um, the frogs in the boiling water. And essentially, if you're not familiar with it, it's a matter of you know, you put frogs in tepid or comfortable water and they're fine. You slowly crank up the heat on the water and they'll stay. They will stay until that water is boiling and it kills them. Whereas if the water is already boiling, you drop them into there, they jump out. So if you think of that, you'll kind of better understand why the teacher shortage is as it is, which you know, I put quotation marks around that because there's no teacher shortage. There are tons of people that I even know personally who would love to teach, but they want to teach, not do teaching and admin and all the paperwork and all the counseling and like they just want the job of teaching and they want the other jobs delegated appropriately. But that not being the case, this being the new normal or the way, you know, so many people thinking that this is how it really is supposed to be. I don't see that changing anytime soon. And that's unfortunate for my for my profession. It really does um, break my heart to see what it's come to and to see teachers feel that way because, you know, by making the teachers feel that way, it makes me wonder how then do the children feel? What are we doing to them? I got my two bottles of wine from, you guessed it, Cooper's Hall Winery. But this whole day, this whole day has been derailed. <laughs> Hours later, I did get some earrings at H&M. I had some cute earrings, I will say. I'm trying to step up my accessory game. For years and years, I only wore my diamond studs, which I do miss. It's because you know, I've been wearing this top knot. Turn on the light, KB. Okay. So I've been wearing this top knot that I said I was going to stop wearing because I had some breakage. I think because I'm wearing my ponytail looser, I'm not going to have as much breakage. But I just feel like when I do it, I need some earrings or something to go with. So I think I'm going to have to get a second piercing because I miss my diamond studs they have some significance to me i want to put my studs in my second hole and then wear more decorative earrings in the front but yeah i feel like you know when i have my hair in the top knot i should have you know you jiggling baby go ahead baby you know happening in the front so i don't know but anyway um had a good time met with a couple and that's what i like about these testing tastings i promise you ladies if you're one of those people who goes to work and you just go home like that's all you're doing with your 50 plus don't waste it please don't i have talked to so many people and they're like oh my gosh I, where's your husband where's this and oh you're not married oh you just seem so cheerful and i think there's this cons this idea I think there's this idea that if you're single, you're lonely or something like that. Or if you're, if you, let me just say, okay, so here's where this is coming from. Cause if it sounds random, let me, yeah, I'm trying to hold this. Let me, let me set y'all down. Get comfortable girl. Cause here we go. We run in our mouth. I think a lot of times I've known some friends who have stayed in relationships much longer. I've done it myself. So I know what I'm talking about, but I've known some friends who have stayed in relationships much longer than they should because they have this fear of being lonely. When I tell you I have never been more lonely in my life than when I was in an unfulfilling relationship, I'm not even kidding. Am I saying this to try to get people to leave their relationships? Absolutely not. I love marriage. I love love. Hello, welcome to the W2. 
welcome back. It is now Saturday night. Earlier today, I went to Cooper Hall Winery, did my tasting, what's new. Came back with a couple of bottles of wine and stopped by H&M and Ulta Beauty to pick up a couple of things. So later, I went to a birthday party to celebrate someone's 40th. I am um, my last video. I did, which was my fall haul, y'all. I showed me at the uh, jazz festival that I went to, and I showed myself doing a, like a little twirl dance that I was doing. And oh, a couple of people had such negative, nasty, disparaging comments about that. And I can honestly say I wasn't even mad about it. I was just disappointed. What was basically said alluded to something about me being just so ghetto. And it more so prompted the question in me of, uh, really? Ghetto is what you go straight for? Here's the thing. In the Hawaiian culture, they have made, I'm sure, millions of dollars off of luau's in which women in very scantily clad bikinis you know, but with the lay around their neck and the grass around their hips, they do pretty productive, pretty provocative dances. So I guess if I had done my swirl, but put the hand movement to it, maybe now, it's not ghetto. In the Mid-Eastern culture, they also move their hips. They may do it with, you know, more of a jerky type of movement. So perhaps if I was jerking with, oh, but I can't jerk too much now because if I'm really jerking, then I'm twerking and that's certainly most absolutely get out. My thing is this, people. I think we need to be careful of uh, the term ghetto and how loosely we assign it to um, black women. It's almost as if it's not acceptable until and unless another culture says it's acceptable. It's almost as if it's not acceptable until and unless we add something to it and then it's acceptable. But if you don't do it then, oh my goodness, if you're doing it outside of anything else that the other cultures have said are acceptable, you just think, yeah. Like, right, stop with that. Here's what, if a Hawaiian woman can swing and swirl her hips, it's okay for me to do it. If a Eastern woman can swing and swirl her hips, it's okay for me to do it. If neither of those women wants to swirl their hips, it's okay for me to do it. And that's just what it is. I also had um, some women telling me, uh, at 57 years old, you should not be wearing shorts, period. Doesn't matter how I mix up this and that. And you know what, here's the thing. With regard to should a woman in her 50s wear shorts, um, she should if she wants to. I will if I want to. Like, that's just, what are we doing? I don't understand it. Now, I will say this, by and large, the comments I received were positive, and that's really what I focus on. That's why I left those. I don't have, and let me, let me back up on that too. Um, I just realized my water might be loud. But um, I don't have a problem with someone disagreeing with what I wear. I'm still going to wear. I don't have a problem with someone even disagreeing with what I do with regard to dance. If I feel happy and there's a time for it, I'm going to dance anyway. This life, this thing we're calling life here, this is way too short. I have had the pleasure, like I said, I went to a 40th birthday party. She's obviously younger than me. But I have had the pleasure of making friends and acquaintances with people who are my age who are younger and who are older. Unfortunately, some of the older ones who have passed away, um, you know, they're gone. But before they left, they knew that they were leaving. And I would ask them questions like, you know, if you had a word of advice for me, what would it be? What would you like people to know or understand? Not one of them has ever said, I wish I cared about the opinions of others more. I wish I held back more. I wish I laughed less. I wish I enjoyed life less. They've never said anything anywhere along those lines, quite the contrary. So that being the case, yeah, if there's a time to dance and I feel like dancing 
And I'm so blessed with the body that allows me to do it. That's exactly what I'm going to do, y'all. So I want to be clear and say, I keep making a bunch of noise. Let me rinse my shirt and then stop. Okay, I just want to be clear in saying I legit do not have a problem with someone disagreeing with me at all. I do, however, have a problem with someone disrespecting me. And in disagreeing with each other, there's a thing called decorum. There's also a thing called keep your mouth shut. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. But I'm not even going to focus on that. There's a thing called decorum. There's a way that you say things um, to people. And judging me, telling me I'm ghetto and, you know, I'm problematic for black women as a whole, really I am. Because I would venture to say that my career has been one that has not only uplifted many, many, many black girls who would grow into women, but boys as well. I think I've represented very well, especially in my career and as a woman you know, in her 50s, showing other women that, hey, life ain't over yet. It ain't all downhill from here. The times can go from good to even gooder. <laughs> you know what I mean? My second um, singlehood is here, and I, I intend to use it to the fullest. I intend to do the things I enjoy doing, wake up when I want to wake up, cook for who I want to cook for. You know, I intend to spend it reading books I love to read and doing all the things that are enriching for me so that should I remarry, I am going into it a full, complete, and happy woman because any man who deserves me deserves that as well. You understand what I'm saying? So, no, I will not be told that I am a poor representation. I won't buy it. I mean, you can try it. But I, I'm not picking up what you're putting down with regard to that. And I don't want anyone to. That is seriously my advice to anyone, regardless of your age. Live it to the fullest. The thing about offering those opinions, though, is I needed to not be narrowly focused on black women. I needed to not be a thing of, this is what black women do. Any other women who are doing it, oh, we're going to call that, you know, nice, or we're going to call that cultivated, we're going to call that art form, we're going to call it whatever, an enjoyment, and we're going to pay money as tourists to see it. But when a black woman does it, by golly, it's, it's ghetto. No, stop it. Waste of your time. Sometimes I feel like we have judgments disguised as opinions, and we're not even aware of what they're based in or where they're coming from. I think it's important that we, we kind of delve into that and look into that a little bit more. Don't worry about believing um, that a thing is okay for your culture if the masses tell you it's okay for your culture. Like even right now, there seems to be this whole thing of should women wear makeup, what it makes them or how it categorizes them if they don't. At least I can say that's not for black women, it's for a broad base of women. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think we should judge each other in such a way either, but to each your own. If you're comfortable with wearing makeup, wear it. If you're not comfortable with wearing makeup, don't wear it. I don't like the way. That part doesn't matter. But then there come the other things where I feel some things are being dog whistled to us and we're actually buying into it. Um, case in point being dressing classy and being, you know, having the old money look and all of these other things, uh, the, the clean girl aesthetic, you know, those to me are kind of being dog whistled as things that really don't include people who look like me. Historically speaking, my people don't have old wealth here in America. You know, and colonization has happened across the globe, so it's just not something we typically have. So when you hear that term, who are you really talking about? I, I put it right there with that whole MAGA dog whistle thing. There are certain dogs that answer and respond to that. Like people wonder, you know, oh, it's just a coincidence that white supremacist groups are responding to MAGA. It's a dog, no, it's a dog whistle. Dogs are coming because they hear the whistle. Same thing to me is happening with the clean girl, the old money, and all of that aesthetic. But 
Come on, with regard to wearing our hair slick back, we've been cutting a hole in the toe of the sock and rolling that thing down, busting it into a little donut. Y'all remember that? Putting it on the back. We, what? We've been doing that. We've been lining our lips with a darker color than what was on the inside of the skin I've been. We've been wearing long fingernails. When we first started that, it was so doggone ghetto and this, that, and the third. Now other cultures are wearing it. And you know what? You can have the longer, classy almond look, or you can have the coffin look, but taper it. Or you can put the French manicure look on it. Oh, it's just part of the clean girl aesthetic. And stop it. Stop letting your opinions and things like that be dictated by the masses who aren't really including you in a whole lot of the things or conversations or looks that are being discussed. You're being appropriated, and you're finding it appropriate. Don't. That's all I'm saying. Just, just consider, consider the source of what you're saying. And then, if you got an opinion about it, have some decorum with it. Could you do that? Again, I don't have a problem with people having opinions that differ than mine. I have my own opinions. Nine out of ten, if it's about someone, I'm kind of keeping them to myself. Oh, but let me say this as part of my opinion. I, I enjoy sports, particularly boxing and football, but um, as part of that, I was watching, years ago, I started watching a podcast called I Am Athlete. Good podcast. Some of those gentlemen branched out and uh, turned over, it wasn't a podcast, I should say, but some of the gentlemen who were on that podcast branched out and they are now on the pivot. Well. They had a conversation regarding the Ish and Giggles um, podcast. Um, what are their names? James and Fuhat, I believe. So they had conversations about that. And if you don't listen to any other part of that clip, listen to Ryan's speech. I felt like he so eloquently stood up for black women, which let's face it, Malcolm X said it years ago, and it has not changed. We are the least protected. But the way he stood up and the way he gave his opinion on that is awesome. If I can, I'm going to link that um, in my description box below. And I strongly encourage you, please, listen to it because it reminded me to... Well, I guess the internal temperature got too high or something. I don't know why it shut off. But in the meantime, while my um, pasta dish is simmering, I went ahead and prepped up for my second dish that I plan on cooking. And in fact, I can turn this off. Yeah, that's off now. And the water's just boiling, so y'all haven't missed much other than me ranting and complaining. Let me drop my corn and eggs in since the water's boiling now. And how about I got these um, Eggland Best brown eggs? After having gone to Aldi, I already looked at the white eggs. They were like 386 or something. I went to Walmart. They were also 380 something. How about a dozen brown eggs for 370 something? What? I don't even understand what's happening with the price of groceries and stuff. I really don't. God bless you, people with kids and multiple kids and stuff in today's economy. Because, wow. The only reason and way that I can really afford. Like, you know, I do like seafood and things like that, but I get it and can afford it, one, because it's just me, and two, because I pretty much budget for stuff like this. And I also, because I mean, I, I can't just live life without enjoying the things that I enjoy, but you know, I do my own hair. When I do them, I do my own nails. I'll be doing some later. And just little things like that are what, honestly help get me through the economy but then there are those things that what can you do about if you're a person who needs daycare you gotta have that my daughter when she went to daycare it cost me ten dollars a day and on a teacher's salary i was like ten dollars what 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 exactly y'all do it for ten dollars she little she'll make me that much i'll send her with a lunch like i was really complaining about that I don't even know how astronomical the prices are now. Another thing I do is, I don't know if that's going to show up because I don't want to drip it on my other stuff. It's a big sink, but I'm still doing it. 
but I get things at the discounted rate. And the saying, you have not because you ask not, is the absolute truth. I was up there and at Walmart when I bought these groceries and the guy in the deli department was marking down some other stuff. I know I'm skipping all around daycare, blah, blah. But anyway, he was marking down the price of some other stuff. I was like, dang, are y'all gonna mark down the sequel? He said, uh, you know what? Because actually, I had already seen him before. He's someone that I just speak to in general because I see people, I say hi, it's free. And um, we have that kind of rapport. I'm telling you, you save so much money being friendly. Like when your grandmother said you catch more flies with honey than vinegar, she ain't never lied. Most flies are also attracted to sugar honey iced tea, but that's neither here nor there. But when I spoke to him and said that to him, he was like, you know what, just for you. And he marked it down. I saved six of my dollars. He put the sale by that date, which he was probably gonna really do anyway, but he was trying to make me feel special, and I did. I felt special. But um, that has happened in general in life for me too. Just for the free 99 of speaking to people and being courteous, you'll be surprised what that really will get you a lot. It'll get you far. Much further than being nasty, that's for sure. I love how hot my water gets. I have the maintenance value adjusted to make it this hot now. And I just have to be mindful of that whenever Callie's in the house. But, oh, love it. Strange people has a dishwasher, but since it's just me, a lot of times it's easier. And I just feel cleaner to wash by hand because I know I'm tossing some bleach in there. Now, can I make it water even with this heat as hot as a dishwasher? No. So I get why people still use it. And it's convenient. At some point, I might buy into getting maid service for cleaning because I don't know if they got tricks in, of the trade and stuff that they know, plus it's a team of them, it's quicker, and I can just use my time to do other things while they do that. I'm feeling like I'm really ahead of the game. I had a full day today, out and about, went to the party, and now I'm doing a little bit of meal prepping for the week. I'm doing it on a Saturday night because the Chiefs play tomorrow. My daughter is hosting it. I already gave my shrimp. Oh, I didn't. I'm tripping. I'm tripping down my shrimp for my other dish. I didn't get the shrimp any head start or the lobster tail. The corn I give a head start, the eggs, of course. And then we just bake it until The lobster and shrimp are pink. I like them to still be plump and pop. I don't like a chewy shrimp at all. You know what I just realized, y'all? I forgot to pre cook my sausage. I'll be darned. It is too late now. I always cook my sausage a little run in my mouth. I mean, it's not bad this way. I just I prefer it my way. All right, I am done with this. As soon as that is done, I'm gonna take my happy parts to bed. It's been a long day and I'm tired. Okay, so girl, I got back on and I filmed some more, but for whatever reason, that portion of the video was corrupt. And every time I would try to upload it Tuesday, it wouldn't tell me what was wrong but somehow I ended up going through the whole process of looking at my saved files and all of that stuff. And I found that the closing part was just corrupt and it prevented the whole video from uploading. But anyway, all I was saying was, you know, pretty much a close, I'm going to bed and things like that. And I don't mind losing that part of the footage. I also had a little more that I was talking about, just, you know, shooting the breeze with y'all as normal. But the portion that bothers me that was gone was the part where I said thank you so much for taking the time to view my channel. And that's important to me because I always want you to know that I appreciate the time you take to spend with me. And I thank you so much for doing just that. Especially when you take the time to comment and let me the positive me now. Y'all ain't gotta be dragging me. But even if you do have a comment that differs from me, I really legit don't mind that. Just 
you know, keep it respectful. It's the same rule that I tell the kids, you know, talk to somebody the same way you want to be talked to. That's all that I ask, and I'll do the same for you, which is why it's important that I say thank you. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a fantastic remainder of the week. Like, by the time I get this uploaded, it'll probably be Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend, and let's talk again soon. Take care.